Disclaimer. I've made a conscious choice not to show my face, and I've also chosen to invest in an unknown person to do my voiceover. I know this is not ideal, but the risk of someone recognizing me and losing my job is too great. I'm now working full-time as a kindergarten teacher. The day I can pay my bills with opinions, I will also reveal who I am. Given that I risk my job by talking about this, I think it's even more important that it's actually discussed out loud, before it's too late. Alright, enough about me. In Scandinavia, gender equality is important, but sometimes it can go too far, especially when it comes to young children. This is particularly evident in some Norwegian kindergartens, where gender equality ends up leading to segregation. I've been following the developments in Canada and the USA in recent years and see that the trend is also reaching us in Scandinavia. In Sweden, some kindergartens allow children to choose their gender or non-gender. In Norway, we now see some kindergartens dividing boys and girls into groups, where girls can learn to climb and boys can learn about care and affection. Upon entry to kindergarten, children are given a red and a blue t-shirt. The staff wants the children to wear the t-shirts every day, but there is no compulsion. We want as little focus on clothes and things as possible. We want to see the person, not the nice sweater or dress, says acting director Hala Jorandar Dottir. I already feel that this is the wrong direction to go. By dividing the children with different clothes, focus areas, and placements, we start a process of segregation that does not belong in kindergarten or this century. The director says that they want to see the person, but they force them to wear specific clothes and participate in activities they may not want to, which can shape them into people they do not want to be. How can this promote equality when the individual's right to be themselves is important? This can also lead to increasing differences in how they view each other. In a study conducted by Rebecca S. Begler and Lynn S. Leiben entitled Developmental Intergroup Theory, they suggest that stereotypes and prejudices develop through childhood and early adolescence as a result of complex interactions between cognitive, social, and cultural factors. This development occurs through several mechanisms, such as social learning and observation. Children learn and internalize stereotypes and prejudices through observing others' behavior and through social interactions with peers, family, and media. They take in information from their surroundings and then form their perceptions based on this. That means that by observing how we adults categorize them into groups and additionally show that we have labeled them as not good enough, it can follow them further in life. Furthermore, the director also states, compensatory work is an important concept in Haley pedagogy. Through exercises, the kindergarten tries to provide them with what they lack. This means that the boys group specifically focuses on closeness, for example, by letting two boys share a chair. They also practice communicating without being restless listening, fine motor skills, and understanding when others need help. In the girls' group, the focus is on encouraging the girls to take up space, stand in the middle, use their voice loudly, and practice gross motor skills, especially on the climbing wall and obstacle course. Perhaps one day the girls will wear their clothes inside out to show that it's okay to be different. Here, the kindergarten already shows how they have given boys and girls different characteristics. The girls lack the confidence to be different, even though there is no room for anyone to be different. This goes against the framework for kindergartens that all kindergartens must follow. The framework states that the kindergarten shall show how everyone can learn from each other, promote children's curiosity, and wonder about similarities and differences. In addition, the kindergarten should contribute to making all children feel seen and recognized for who they are and highlight the individual's place and value in the community. Instead of following this model, I hope we can look at the individual child. We should look at their strengths and what we as responsible educators and adults can do for them. Those of us who spend a lot of time with children have a great responsibility where we must provide them with challenges and development, but at the same time, let children be children. When you think back to your childhood, do you remember all the times you had to share a chair with another child to learn closeness? Or do you remember better being free, playing, and immersing yourself in a completely different world where you formed strong relationships that might last a lifetime? In Norway, we have a strong tradition where the value of children's play is central to our pedagogy. I'm afraid that this may disappear through the focus on teaching children to fit into a standard world and to adhere to a specific ideology that some have decided is the right one. This can lead to children not developing into independent individuals who can make their own choices and think their own thoughts. It scares me that such kindergartens are allowed to operate in Norway, despite contradicting the framework that all kindergartens must follow. I wonder what would have happened if we had divided the children based on other criteria, such as social status, economic conditions, or cultural background. 
The fact that the kindergarten predetermined children's characteristics based on gender and even decided that they are not good enough as they are is a development I do not want to be a part of. 